Hi everybody and welcome back to Lost Genre Reddit Stories. Before we start, a short PSA. Christmas is coming and so YouTube's algorithm will prioritize serving videos on the holiday subject and if you're not subscribed to my channel, you probably won't see my videos in your feed. So come on, click that subscribe button and let's keep enjoying these stories every day. Now let's move on to the story. Before we start, a short trigger warning. In the update, there's mention of an eating disorder not otherwise specified. OP doesn't go into specific details, he just mentions it. Now let's get started. This post is from the subreddit Relationships and it's by user BigBoobedGF44. My 28 male, large chested girlfriend of 2 years, 28 female, was asked by our roommate's girlfriend, 21 female, to stop going brawless in our apartment. We have a very quiet and comfortable living situation. I lived with Troy, 23 male roommate, for about a year before Hannah, my girlfriend, moved in. It was an unexpected permanent move rather than temporary, but everyone gets along. And in fact, Troy and I are closer because Hannah is the type of girl who is very outgoing and brings quiet and shy people out of their shells. Hannah's breasts are very large. They seem even larger than they may be due to the fact that Hannah is only 4 foot 11, 1 meter 50. She jokes that she is 2 thirds boob even. Her biggest bras say 32k, the smallest say 32gg. She's typically modest with them as she doesn't enjoy a lot of male attention. Not that I try to, but if I were to ask her to wear something revealing, I don't even know that she'd have anything in her closet. She typically takes off her bra in the evening. Troy usually stays in his room and doesn't really socialize with us most of the time. No negativity, he's just a loner type. Anytime he does come out, we all chat happily. There's never been any complaint about her brawlessness. And for the record, I can definitely say Hannah isn't Troy's physical type. She's a size 16 and he has a big preference for very skinny women. Not fit, but just very skinny. So I honestly doubt he's looked at Hannah in any sexual way to begin with. Not to mention, like I said, she's generally modest and doesn't have them flopping around or anything. Troy and his girlfriend Jenna are a new thing of the past four months. He's brought her over and we all hung out and Jenna and Hannah got along extremely well. But a few days after, Jenna sent Hannah a message on Facebook asking her if she'd mind wearing a bra when Troy was around citing that it was inappropriate and kind of sleazy. Hannah just shrugged it off and said sure, why not? So to compromise, she started wearing a very flimsy sports bra. Things seemed like they were fine until Jenna came over again and Hannah just happened to be coming home from the gym. She was walking between our bedroom and the bathroom without a bra on, but was otherwise clothed. Jenna lost her crap and started yelling at Troy about this and then called Hannah a tramp, a sleaze, etc. She brought up the way she loaves around in dresses and lets her ass hang out, etc, etc. I'll admit that sometimes Hannah's dresses right up when she's lounging on the couch with a book, which is pretty much always. But since day one, anytime she heard Troy moving around the apartment closer to the living room, she sits up and straightens herself out to cover herself up. She does not like being looked at by men, as I said. Hannah didn't hear anything because she was in the shower and when she got out she asked where Jenna went and I had to explain that they had a fight. Hannah asked what had happened and Troy told her it was just nothing. Jenna then ripped into Hannah on Facebook, calling her all kinds of names and telling her that she's trying to steal Troy from her, etc, etc. Hannah was hurt and she went to Troy to apologize about the bra thing and asked him if he's always had a problem with it and Troy said something like, I didn't even know I was supposed to care. I don't know how to handle this, obviously I'd prefer my girlfriend to be comfortable and not be attacked, but I do want to know, Jenna's tirade aside, is it appropriate for her not to wear a bra in her own home? Well, OP in my opinion, no, it is absolutely not inappropriate for Hannah to feel comfortable in her home. If Jenna has a problem with this, well so sorry Jenna but you don't get a vote. Troy has never expressed any discomfort with her doing this. He didn't even know he was supposed to care. I love that phrase by the way. 
In fact, everything was fine until Jenna started acting like an idiot. Now, the way I would handle, and only if Hanna is okay with this, is tell Troy about what Jenna did on Facebook, if he doesn't already know, and tell him that that behavior will not be tolerated, and if Jenna doesn't chill out, she won't be welcomed back in the apartment. Now, that might sound harsh, because, you know, it is Troy's girlfriend, but he sounds like a sensible guy, and it's not cool to make Hanna feel uncomfortable in her own home, let alone harass her on Facebook. So what do you guys think about this whole thing? What would you do if you were in OP's shoes? Let me know in the comments section, and now let's move on to the community comments to see what they said. Sweatermaster says, Nope, Jenna is totally out of line. She doesn't even live there. Hannah doesn't seem like she's doing anything inappropriate, and it's in her own home. Jenna seems totally insecure in her and Troy's relationship. My husband and I live with two male roommates, and if some girl came into my house and told me what to wear, I would be livid. That would never fly in a million years with me, and don't even get me started on the snarky Facebook messages. That is certainly a huge overreaction and frankly childish. Poor Troy, I feel bad for him. Honestly, if she doesn't like what Hannah wears, then this girl can get the F out. She has no say whatsoever, and if she doesn't like it, she doesn't need to come over. Really, you could set boundaries of how much time she could spend there since she is making one of the housemates uncomfortable. This girl is out of her mind and seems like Troy might be better off without the drama in his life. Good luck. Ethel Fleta says, That girl is so crazy that her brain is a big bag full of hissing cats. Hannah pays rent, so that is her apartment, and if she wanted to walk around naked, that would still be appropriate. Hannah sounds actually pretty modest and understanding about being inappropriate and having a male roommate. Keep her. Jenna is jealous, a controlling bitch. She insulted your girlfriend in her own home, attacked everyone's faithfulness, and then blew her crazy all over Facebook. Troy needs to step up and dump her as soon as possible. She is the kind of girlfriend who actively chases away any other female. Soon, he wouldn't be able to hang out with his male friends either. Girls like that put leashes on their doormat boyfriends and leave a trail of scorched earth wherever they go. So, Troy dumps crazy, or if he continues seeing her, stupid, then Jenna is still banned from the apartment. Now, what the F are you doing not defending your innocent girlfriend? Both of you guys need to step up and stop pretending nothing happened because it was just girls. How are you so ignorant about decent behavior you have to come on Reddit and actually ask if she was inappropriate? Your girlfriend just got sucker punched in her own home and all over the internet. You get yourself in her corner and ask her what she wants you to do. You clearly state that you know she is awesome and this is all Jenna's jealousy. Girls with large chests have had crap like this happen so many times growing up. Girls can be vicious. That is probably one of the reasons your girlfriend is so modest, because she has been attacked for being too sexy long before she even knew what sexy was. Every large chested girlfriend I have has emotional scars from middle school. I guarantee that your poor girlfriend has been crying, searching her closet and calling her best friends. This hurt her. Listen to writing says, you need to tell Jenna to back the F off. One of the things that I look forward to in the evenings is taking my bra off. So freeing and comfortable. It's not like your girlfriend is pulling up her shirt and rubbing her naked boobs on your roommate. Jenna is clearly very insecure and I don't see your girlfriend doing any wrong here. As for the name calling, rude as F. Well, in short, the community agrees it's not inappropriate and Hannah can do whatever the F she wants in her house. Now, unfortunately, OP did not respond to any comments, so I can't add any additional context. So let's continue with the update to see what happened after this. A few things to address before I go into the actual update. I did not confront Jenna when she was going on her tirade because they were in Troy's bedroom. I have no reason to barge into someone else's bedroom to start a fight. You can stop with the pitchforks about how I was awful for not immediately wrestling Jenna to the floor in a show of manliness. Waiting for the event to pass was a much better way to handle this. Hannah does not need you to tell her that she's wearing the wrong sized bra. She has been to a bra that fits for fit checks and she measures herself frequently and knows what works on her body. She has a wide range of sizes from when she was figuring out her fit size. If the measurements really don't make sense to you, I can't help you. 
All I can say is that she's a fat bottom girl. Now to the actual update. I talked to Troy about Jenna's outburst. He said that he would handle it, and he was extremely apologetic and said that it would not happen again. He said he was glad Hannah didn't hear Jenna's tirade, and I agreed that it was for the best if we tried to handle this maturely. Hannah was still hurt by Jenna's comments on Facebook, but Troy asked Jenna to apologize, and that's what happened. We let Troy know that Jenna wouldn't be allowed over again if she continued to behave like that. He agreed and said he would be reconsidering their relationship. Some time passed and here we are. Hannah has gone back to just being comfortable in her own home, taking her bra off when she gets home. She is respectful of Jenna and Troy's space and wears a bra if Jenna is over. But things changed the other night. Hannah and I were cooking dinner when Jenna came over to wait for Troy. She hung out in the kitchen and talked to Hannah. They seemed to get along a little better at least. Hannah is very sweet and doesn't hold any grudges. I was chopping up Brussels sprouts to roast while Hannah was making some herb and parm crusted chicken or something and some cucumber tomato salad that I love. She coated some huge chicken breasts that she'd pounded and that's when Jenna piped up and said something like, Wow, that's so much food. You're not going to eat all that, are you? To Hannah. Hannah laughed and said, yeah, she was going to eat it all. It was her dinner. Jenna scoffed and made some comments like, that's so much food, I could never eat that much. But well, look at me. She got up and tried to get our attention and show off her figure. Hannah didn't say anything, but I could tell by the look on her face that she was starting to panic. Hannah has a long history with an eating disorder not otherwise specified, and one of her triggers is people paying attention to what she eats like that. She used to not be able to eat at restaurants because she was afraid of people judging her. Jenna took it a step further and said something about how she goes to the gym every day because she loves keeping her figure and she knows Troy loves it. She pointedly asked Hannah when the last time she went to the gym was and then asked me if I thought Hannah should do some kind of yoga or something. She made some comments about how sad it is when girls let themselves go after they get boyfriends. For the record, Hannah didn't. I was starting to get very angry because it sounded like she was implying I do not love Hannah's figure or something. I put my hand on Hannah's shoulder and told her to go to our bedroom. I could finish up. She had the fakest smile and said goodnight to Jenna. I let Jenna have it. I don't want to go into what I said because it was not my best moment, but I could not accept her trying to intimidate or make Hannah feel bad. I especially could not take her implying at all that I wasn't attracted to Hannah. It all felt too surreal. I've never met someone who would just say mean things about a girl who was perfectly nice to her like that, especially not about her weight. Jenna left and told me she was going to have a talk with Troy. I consoled Hannah, who said she was okay but ended up not eating dinner. We watched some TV together and about two hours later Troy comes in. He just stands in the doorway and looks at us and he looks straight at Hannah and says, I broke up with her, I'm so sorry, she is never coming back. Jenna is gone and done. Troy later said that Jenna was convinced Hannah was trying to steal him and that she was just jealous of her body. It was all because of one day when Jenna came over and Hannah gushed over the dress she was wearing. Jenna thought that meant she was in love with her or something. I have no idea where this came from. It was never about the bro, I guess. Wow, well OP, regardless of how much of an idiot Jenna was, she's gone, so that's always good. Good for you for standing up for your girlfriend and letting Jenna have it. I am curious as to what you said, but I guess we'll never know. Anyway, thank you for sharing and all the best to the three of you. Hopefully Troy meets somebody way nicer than Jenna and Jenna gains some perspective. Now let's move on to the next post. This post is from the subreddit Malicious Compliance and it's by user Riddick Bowers. A little malicious compliance from a now retired manager. I read all the malicious compliance stories about crappy managers with great interest. I will share my story which is from the manager's perspective. I will add in the obligatory this didn't happen today but a few years ago. I was part of a security team for a large public building. Since the building had to be available to the public for more than 8 hours per day, we had two shifts. Early shift 6am to 2pm and late shift 10am to 6pm. I was the supervisor on the late shift. 
my staff consisted of me and six guards, including a guy I'll call Jersey. The building closed at 5 p.m., which meant no more people could come in, but the employees and public inside could finish their business and leave. At the end of the day, our job was to ensure the building was clear of people, lock all the appropriate interior doors, set the alarms, and leave at 6. Since it didn't take seven of us to complete this, I would allow all staff except one to leave about 5.15 or 5.30. By then, 90% of the people were gone. The daily designated staff member and I could handle the closing tasks. The staff would rotate who stayed with me each day and the system worked out well for all involved. This meant everyone was getting off work 30 to 45 minutes early every day and getting paid for a full day. One morning, about 9.30, we had a minor crisis in the building and I needed a staff member to handle it. I knew I could take most of the day so I didn't want one of the early shift guys to handle it or it would incur overtime. Two or three of my guys, including Jersey, were in the locker room getting ready to start their shift. I asked Jersey to grab his gear and go handle the issue. He looked at me and said, You know, technically, I ain't on the clock yet. I told him he was correct and to never mind. I grabbed a day shift person to handle the issue and the day progressed as normal. 5.15 rolls around and I wander into the locker room. I see my guys all getting ready to leave, including Jersey. I asked them where they were going. They told me which employee was staying with me and that he was still at his post. I glanced around the room and locked eyes with Jersey and said, You know, you are technically all still on the clock. Nobody leaves before 6. It was dead silent as I walked out of the locker room. I have no idea what was said to him in the locker room, but I bet it wasn't pretty. We all stayed late that day, and no one said a word about it to me. However, the following morning, Jersey was in my office waiting for me when I arrived. He said, Hey boss, I'm sorry about yesterday morning. I was out of line. You won't hear that from me ever again. Whatever you need, I'm here. We returned to normal operations after that and I had no trouble getting someone to step up on occasion. As a boss, I will do whatever I can to take care of my employees, but I expect a little flexibility from them in return. Well done OP, that's a way to teach him a lesson. You didn't go on a power trip or anything like that. You just reminded everybody that having someone's back is a two-way street. Thanks for sharing OP. And it's that time that we've reached the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed today's stories. I really did enjoy reading them to you. So if you did, then don't be shy and go ahead and give the video a like. And don't forget to subscribe or even share this video with people that you might think will enjoy my storytelling. Also, if you have the time, go down to the video description and check out all the links I have for you, from our Discord community to my channel merch. And finally, I'd like to say thank you for watching. It really means a lot to me that you enjoy my videos. And having said all that, I'll see you guys in the next video.